Hi, Josh Garrett from jgarrett.info here. I'm going to do a little demonstration today where I show you how to mimic uh, send and return tracks using uh, effects racks. So this is something that's really useful for if you're uh, wanting to play live and you're putting a live set together and you have particular sends that you're using for um, effects on particular uh, tracks or input sounds uh, that you don't want to just uh, devote uh, more send uh, tracks to in your live set. So um, the more sends you have, obviously, the more you have uh, tracks over here taking up space within your user interface, and maybe they're only used in one track. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've got one track set up here. That's a MIDI track, and I've got a distorted kick drum on that. So let me uh, run that so you can hear that. So I've got just a little modulation on that. And this is a track I did in the studio that I want to integrate with my live set. Now the other thing that I'm doing with this is I have my A and B sends set up and I've got two different reverb, uh, reverb plugins here with different settings, different decay times. So if I send into send A, I get send B. It's going to sound similar for now. Let me. Okay. So those are effects that I can use to kind of change up, um, I guess, the tone and the texture of the track that I'm working on. So I've got these send tracks that I'm using. Uh, now, when I'm preparing this for a live set, I'm going to drop in a uh, effects rack, so audio effect rack. And I'm going to add a couple chains. Now, the first chain I'm going to create, so just right click, uh, create chain. And I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to call this one dry. Um, let me retype that. So I'm going to call this one dry. So basically, the dry signal comes through here. It'll be unaffected. Uh, that's the first thing that allows me to treat this as a, uh, uh, as a send instead of an insert. Uh, because if you're doing a send, uh, you still get the dry signal from the original track versus an insert, which can potentially make everything wet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more chains, one for each of my send tracks. So I'll call this, um, this one first, uh, first one I'll call long reverb. And then I'll add another chain. So right click, create chain and rename that one short reverb. So just using the uh, command R to rename um, on the Mac. Okay, so now I have basically three chains in here. Um, I'm not sending to either of the sends. And you'll hear it's kind of loud. Because it's tripling up the signal. Um, it's effectively just making it louder at this point. So again, I'm going to keep the dry one without any effects. Long reverb, I'm going to take my reverb from the A return, pick it up, and drag it in and drop it on long reverb. So there's my long reverb on this uh, chain. So now if I, if I run that, you'll hear that the effect will be in. Okay, so the effect is in, but it's in 100%. Dry wet set to 100%. And then I'm going to take my short one and I'm going to drop it onto short reverb. It's still not really short, it's still a fairly long um, 8 second reverb, but still it's shorter than the uh, 21 seconds of the other one. So now if I run those together, you can hear that they're both in. Now, I want to be able to do the same thing that I was doing when I was using my returns, uh, which was to just send into the return and it would only affect when it hit, right? So the effect isn't in until the signal goes into the uh, into the uh, uh, reverb. So, you know, you might think that you could use uh, these and if you're using just a standard uh, um, return where you're not changing the amount that you're uh, sending to it, then yes, you can use these and, and that'll work the way that you want it to as long as the um, settings that you want are static. In this case, I don't want to do that, So if uh, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to map by right-clicking on Long Reverb. I'm going to map that to Macro 7 um, of this chain, and I'm going to map that to Macro 8 uh, for the short reverb. So now I get my dry signal again. Okay, 
but if I bring up the volume on those. So you can hear the, the effect is in even though I don't actually want it to be in yet because I want it to come from the attack of a particular hit. Okay, so how do we, how do we get around that? I'm going to unmap these. And I'm going to set them back to zero. Okay. So this is a great use for the utility plugin. I'm going to drop the utility plugin in front of both of the reverbs. And now I can control the amount of uh, signal that's going into the reverb. So uh, on sh short reverb here, I'm going to map this to macro 8. And on long reverb, I'm going to map the gain in the utility to macro 7. Okay. So let's start running it again. Now if I bring it up in between, you see there's no signal. Okay. Now if I want that to hit, Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that with gain, it will um, increase, so that's something you probably want to be aware of. So you probably want to set your max to zero in the map mode. So just click map mode, and then uh, click the property you want to change or the value you want to change, and punch that in. So you put it back, you just hit on map mode, or uh, close the map mode. <laughs> okay, select this, and then... And now it's behaving the same way. So you see the effect isn't actually in. It's not really a tail until... Uh, until you actually send the signal. And if you bring it up in between, there's no... the effect isn't in until you actually send it. So a handy little trick for using uh, the utility uh, plugin with effects racks to uh, simulate send and return tracks within an effects rack. So uh, thanks again for uh, checking out one of my demos. Uh, you can reach me at info at jgarrett.info. That's J-G-A-R-R-E-T-T -T dot I-N-F-O. Uh, you can also check out my website there. And uh, look forward to more demos in the future. Thanks.